Hi, I'm Gary Ditch, and you're watching Storytellers on Competition Plus TV. Well, I mean, when I first met John Force, was our first trip to Australia, Christmas of 74, 75, and, uh, you know, we're a bunch of dumb young guys, didn't know nothing, and like we were talking earlier, you know, in that era, there was 400 funny cars across the country, and you knew of some of them, and obviously everybody knew Don Perdome, and everybody knew Raymond Beetle, and everybody knew Jungle Jim, but there was a whole bunch of the rest of us that didn't really know each other unless you happened to race them at your local racetrack, and... Uh, and so, by pure luck, I got picked to go to Australia. And, and how it actually really happened was the uh, contact in Australia, a gentleman named Keith Williams, who owned the track at Surfer's Paradise and at Adelaide, was friends with Ray Brock, who was the editor of Hot Rod Magazine at the time. And they had tracks over there that were primarily circuit courses, but they had a straightaway long enough to make a drag strip on it, and the sport of drag racing was growing and growing in Australia. And so Keith thought it'd be kind of neat to bring American cars over there. So back in the very early 70s, 71, 2 or 3, I can't remember exactly now, uh, he brought what he called American Drag Fest to Australia. And it consisted of... Uh, uh, E.J. Potter's V8 motorcycle, Shrewsbury's wheel stander, uh, uh, the Bushmaster dragster, uh, Jess Tyree's funny car, and it was a huge hit. And then when he came over here to visit with Ray, they went to, uh, to Orange County and saw a 64 funny car show. And they knew right then that funny cars were what they wanted to have over there. And so they took uh, Gene Beaver's L.A. Hooker, and uh, Henry Harrison's Vulture over in 73 because they happened to know Bill Shrewsbury and that all connected and that's how it all worked out. Anyhow, and it was moderately successful. I mean, the crowds loved it. The cars didn't really put on the performance that they probably should have, uh, but it was a hit and the fans loved it. And so next year, Keith, trying to do really the right thing, had contacted Jungle Jim and Ed McCullough. Now you couldn't have got two better cars, you know, anywhere in the country. And set the whole deal up eight months ahead of time that they're going to come over the Ampol New Year's series of Surfers Paradise and four other racetracks in Australia. And about three months before that, uh, Jungle contacted him and said, "No, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm not going to come." And so, in kind of a panic, they didn't know what to do, so they tried to go back to Gene Beaver and say, can you take the L.A. Hooker back next year? And Gene says, no, but I got this. My nephew would sure like to go, and she was, he's really good, and, and all this other sort of stuff. And this is, I didn't know this story when I went. But in a, that's how John Force got his first car. And Gene Beaver told John Force that she was, they won't know any better, you'll be a hero. Doesn't matter, you haven't driven it, haven't got a clue what's going on, but you can go over there and trick those silly Aussies and, you know, make a fortune. And so John bought the car from him. And then about three days before the cars were supposed to be shipped, or actually were supposed to be at the dock to be shipped, uh, they're sitting there waiting around for McCullough. And not there, not there, not there. So they thought, well, gee whiz, we better call him and see when he left. Well, they called him. He answered the phone. Oh, by the way, I'm not going. So <laughs> now they got to get another car. And Shrewsbury and I go way back, and I'm sitting at school at lunch, my feet up on the desk, eating an old dead chicken leg. And Shrewsbury and this guy in a suit walks in. And we've always kidded ever since he showed me pictures of all the beautiful beaches and beautiful women on the beaches in Australia and all this stuff. But when are you going to get me a trip to Australia? So he walks in, you want to go to Australia? Thought it was a joke like we always kidding around about. Sure. Well, you can if you want. Well, when? You got to ship the car tomorrow. By pure luck, my car was ready to run. It was sitting in, a, in the L.A. Auto Show here in Southern California, the premier spot as you walked in the door. And uh, I didn't have a clue. And first of all, I had to figure out where Australia was, so I went and got a globe, 
held it up and looked there. Okay, I found out where it's at. And then I thought, well, you know, I've only been teaching school for two years here. How do I take a month of January off to go racing as much as I might want to do it? And probably the luckiest thing that ever happened to me is Dr. Hanford Rance was our principal at the time. And all of my years in education to this day, he's still the one person that I admire most in education. And just incredible man, absolutely incredible person, leader like you can't believe. And uh, so I walked in and I said, Dr. Rance, uh, I had this opportunity to go to Australia and represent the United States with my race car. And he looked at me and he said, you're a fool if you don't go. When I was in World War II, we spent all our, our and our time in Australia, you better go. And that's probably, you know, might be when you talked about defining moments of my career, might be it, sitting in Dr. Rance's office. And uh, anyhow, we loaded the cars, we showed up over there, and I had never met John Forstall. I saw him walking down the, the jetway in Honolulu Airport. And back then, we were lucky if we had a T-shirt with a picture of our car on it. And it obviously didn't take the team we need now to race these cars. It was me, my wife, and a friend. And here comes these three guys strutting down the jetway with their leather jackets and sponsors and cowboy hats and all this crap. And I'm thinking, we're just going to get our butt kicked. This is going to be terrible. And... Uh, I didn't know at the time that none of them knew anything about the race car, and John had never driven it. And so, anyhow, we show up at, at Australia, and uh, they're talking a good talk. It sounds good, I'll tell you. And we got to do press day on Thursday, so we go out there, and the deal was they fly three, three helicopters from Brisbane out to surfers, dropped them out there, and drug their cameras out, and we're supposed to do a burnout back up and do an interview. So I start my car up, do a burnout back up, yaddy yaddy. John's turn, he goes to roll through the water, tires get dry, hits the gas, and he goes, uh, 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 well, uh. So he backs it back up, puts it in the water, and I mean, this is a burnout that Jungle Jim would have been proud of, I guarantee. It was spectacular. Trouble is, about 300 feet down the racetrack, all this fire's rolling out from underneath the car, and he throws all the rods out of it. That's when I found out that nobody there knew how to work on this car. Because in order for us to have a race that weekend, I had to completely rebuild the car and put it all back together for him before we could go out there. And once again, I still at this point didn't know that he had never driven this car. And so we show up the first night at Surfer's Paradise. And you got to remember, the track's not very good, probably is a little short, probably is a little dark. And John hasn't, any, hasn't got very much experience, if at all. And so, yeah, we go out there the first run, do the burnouts back up. He can't get it out of reverse. So I make a single. It kind of smokes tires from one end to another. Go back next run, do the burnouts back up. He hits the gas, smokes tires, shuts off. I make the run. Next run, we go out there, do burnouts back up stage. I lead, he leads. I go through the lights, got the parachute open. He comes by me and fire's just rolling out from underneath the car again. He goes through the barbed wire fence at the end of the racetrack, stops about four feet from a cow. And to this day, I don't know how he didn't hit the 